Alright, thanks for watching and today I want to do a really cool theorem in linear algebra that's mostly just an exercise with the definition of linear dependence and independence. And what it says, it sort of concerns adding linearly independent vectors to a set, whatever that means. And I like to call it the intruder theorem for reasons that will be obvious in a second. So what does it say? So theorem... Well, as usual, let V be a vector space and suppose S is a subset of V that's linearly independent. So let S be a linearly independent subset, subset of V, could be infinite, completely fine, and suppose you have some vector, which I like to call the intruder, that's not in S. And let Let's call it x be an s, sorry, x be a vector in v that is not an s. But x is not an s. Then that result concerns adding vectors to s. So suppose, if you want, in terms of a picture, suppose you start with a linearly independent set s and you somehow add the vector x to it. So suppose you add x and suddenly you see that this new set called S union x I know it kind of sucks because S union x, okay? Suppose this set is suddenly linearly dependent. What does that mean? It kind of means that it's x, x is fault. So in other words, x here is the intruder, and mathematically what this means is x has to be in the span of s. Or in other words, equivalently, if, um, no, also it turns out both sides are true, if x is already in the span, then this new set will be linearly dependent. What that also means equivalently is that if you add basically linearly independent vectors to your set, in other words, if you add any vector to your set that's not in your span of S, then this new set will be linearly independent. And this is the essence of this intruder theorem. So what it says mathematically, then this new set where you add X to X, S, is linearly dependent if and only if x is in the span of s. Again, this x is what I like to call the intruder. In other words, as I said, the, uh, in practice, you won't really use this theorem. You will use the equivalent theorem. Namely, if you have a vector that's not in your span, then your new set is linearly independent. And this is actually very useful to construct bases of vector spaces. Because let's say for, for as an example, we take R3. So let B, V be R3. And suppose you start with the S being 1, 0, 0. And Somehow let's extend it to be a basis of R3. What this says is if you pick any vector that's not in the span of S, the new set becomes linearly independent. So for example, let's pick X to be, let's say, 1, 1, 0. Or even easier, 0, 1, 0. You see X is not in the span of S. It's not a multiple of 1, 0, 0 which tells us that the new set, S union X, which in this case is just you add X to S, this new set will be linearly independent. And then you can continue. You can, for example, add another vector, let's say, I don't know, uh, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 is not in the span of that set because the last coordinate would have to be zero. So what this tells you is that S union X in this case, which is 
one zero zero, one one zero, and one two three. It's still linearly independent. And then it turns out that if you add any other vector to this set, that new set will be linearly dependent, which really means any vector in R3 is in the span of this new set, which means that this new set actually spans all of R3. And because it's linearly independent, it is a basis for R3. And therefore, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a basis for R3, therefore we found a basis. So it's actually a super useful theorem that intuitively says if you add linearly independent vectors to your set, the new set becomes linearly independent. But this is not why we're here today. Today we're here to prove this theorem. And as I said, it's a nice exercise in showing a linear independence or linear dependence. So, how about we do this? Let's prove actually the easier direction. So let x be in the span of S. So suppose x is in the span of S. And important, remember in the definition of span, we just take finite linear combinations. That's why it's okay if S is infinite. And we somehow want to show that this new set is linearly dependent. Oh, by the way, the reason we say x is not in S, because if x is in S, then this new set is just S. So S is, by definition, linearly independent. So this theorem wouldn't make sense. So suppose x is in the span of S. So x equals to a1, uh, v1 plus dot 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 plus a and v n for some v i in s and a i in your field. So think r or c. And then the idea is just now we get a new linear combo that gives you 0 with x and s. So what we get is then a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n minus, or if you want plus minus 1x, gives you the zero linear combo. But the point is, all those vectors, were, they're either in S or they're in X. So they're all in S union X. S union X. And therefore, even if all the AIs are at zero, that's fine because we get this is non-zero. So there is a non-trivial linear combo of vectors in S union X that gives you zero. In other words, B1, V1, plus dot dot dot, plus Bn, Vn, plus, I don't know, Bn plus one, Vn plus one, equals zero. Or sorry, yeah, let's call it W. Where? bi are in f and wi are in uh, s union x and not all bi's are zero and that's by definition it means that s union x is linearly dependent easy part and now we want to well I mean the other part isn't too bad either so let's assume s union x is linearly dependent and show that x is in the span of s write that down <laughs> So suppose S union X is linearly dependent and uh, show X is in the span of S. All right, what does that mean to, for this set to be linearly dependent? This means that 
uh, a1 uh, v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n equals zero for some for some a i in your field, not all zero, and uh, um, v i are in s union n. Alright, what does it mean for the vi's to be in S union x? It means either vi is in S or vi equals to x. And because we don't want redundancy, assume one of them is x. But look, here's the problem. Suppose all vi's, vi's are in S then that's a problem, because what do we get then? We get that there's a non-trivial linear combo of vectors in S that gives you zero. And that contradicts the fact that S is linearly independent. That's a contradiction with S linearly independent. Which tells us that not all VI are in S, which means some vi has actually to be equal to x. So some vi equals to x. And if you want, you can just repeat the proof with vi equals x. But notice, um, and this sum you can just rearrange. So without loss of generality, assume the first one is x. V1 equals x. Just to simplify our proof, but again, um, if you want, if you don't like this without loss of generality argument, just repeat the proof then with V2, with V3, etc., etc., up to Vn. And so what do we get? This equation then becomes A1x plus dot 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 plus, so again, if you want, A2v2. dot plus a n v n equals zero. And the idea is we can just solve for x, okay? Except the only thing is we don't want to divide by zero. But look, if a1 is zero, then we get that those vectors in S actually, um, I can say, uh, if a1 is zero, we know one of those has to be non-zero, because not all the AIs are zero. But then, what we get here is that still, we get a non-trivial linear combo of vectors in S that give you zero, which would again contradict that S is linearly independent. So, A1 is not zero, otherwise, S is linearly dependent. And therefore, we can actually solve for a1. So a1x, sorry, we can solve for x is minus a2, v2, dot, 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 minus a n, v n. So x is minus a2 over a1, v2, dot, 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 minus a n over a1, v n. Which means that x is a linear combo of vectors in s. So x is in the span of S. And this concludes our proof. We do get that x is in the span of S. And therefore, the intruder theorem has been proven. All right, I hope you like this little linear dependence exercise. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.